Have you seen interest rates lately? Oh my gosh, they have gone through the roof. In fact, they've gone up so high that some of you actually stopped looking to buy a house. However, interest rates are still relatively at an all time low. If you go back and you look at the interest rates over the last 50 years, the 5% range, even 6% range, isn't too bad of an interest rate. With interest rates going up, how much does that actually impact your monthly mortgage payment? Well, in this video, I'm gonna be covering four examples to show you exactly how much your payments impacted when interest rates go up. And if this is the first time that you're checking out my channel, my name is Sean Uihara. I'm a branch manager with Loan Depot, helping you finance your homes all across America. If this is the first time that you're looking to purchase a home or an investment property, or just simply learn how to get your mortgage right, you found the right channel because it wasn't too long ago that I was just like you trying to figure out all these things and navigate the mortgage world. And if you're looking to get pre-qualified or just get a second opinion on your loan, make sure to hit the description to send me an email and I can get back to you and do a quick analysis for you. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel for our weekly content. Now I'm gonna walk through a total cost analysis. This is something that we utilize with every single one of our clients to help them better understand their mortgage. Now what I wanted to break down was just four simple scenarios for you to take a look at. In our first column, our sales price is 450,000 with a 20% down option and I'm just picking an arbitrary rate of 5%. There is no stipulation as to why I'm picking this rate. I just wanted to start at 5% and we're gonna work our way up to 6% just to give you an idea of how the numbers work out. If you want something specific customized to your either purchase or refinance, don't forget you can send me an email and I can customize one of these for you. Now with this scenario, the principal and interest payment is $1,932.56. Again, $450,000 sales price, 20% down. I'm just using a rough interest rate of 5%. There is no requirement for FICO scores or any of that stuff. I'm simply just pick the 5% rate. Now, how does that impact your mortgage if rates go up a quarter percent? That's our second column. So again, same scenario, $450,000 sales price, same loan amount of 360. I'm now gonna use five and a quarter as our interest rate. And you can see our payment is now $1,987.93, or an increase of $55.37. So a quarter percent increase, not a huge difference. Um, you probably wouldn't even notice it if I didn't even tell you what the interest rate was. Now, obviously, if you're buying a home at a higher price point, the difference is gonna be slightly bigger, but just for the sake of this video, you can see between five and five and a quarter, you're talking $55 a month, not a huge jump in payment. Let's also look at what it would be at a half a percent increase. So again, same scenario, $450,000 sales price, same loan amount of 360,000, and now our interest rate at five and a half percent yields us a monthly principal and interest payment of $2,044.04. Again, principal and interest payment, we're not factoring in taxes, insurance, mortgage insurance, or HOAs, any of that extra stuff. We're leaving that out for this video. So now you have a difference of $111. Little bit of a difference. For some of you, it may not be enough to deter you from buying a house, but if you have your eyes set on a certain monthly payment, seeing it go from a one in front to a two, I've seen people walk away from deals like that, but on a monthly basis, you're talking a little over $110 a month with a half a percent increase. And last but not least, we're looking at a 1% increase. So if you've actually been watching the mortgage market over the last several months, rates have definitely jumped up over a point. In some cases, I've seen them jump up even closer to a point and a half. But for the sake of this video, we're looking at a 1% increase. So we went from 5%, now we're going to 6%. Our monthly principal and interest payment is now $2,158.38, or an increase of $225.82 on a monthly basis. Now that starts to add up a little more, and you can see in some cases, I know I've talked to some clients that that will definitely throw them away, from looking to buy a house. But if you can look at this and you can say, hey, you know what, 200 bucks a month is not that big of a deal. I see that home values are going to continue to go up or I know that my landlord, 
when my lease expires this year is going to increase my rent 500 bucks, 800 bucks, a thousand bucks a month. I'd rather bite the bullet, get in, lock a fixed rate payment on my home today versus having to deal with the increase with my landlord at the foreseeable future. And guys, to be honest, I think that's a question many of you need to be asking your landlords and thinking about that. I know so many of you wait to the last minute. You're probably waiting 60, 90 days out before you have to move to find out how much is your rent going to increase. And for most of you, if you're working at a job where you're either paid hourly or salary, an increase in your rent by 20, 30, 40, 50%, that's a huge jump. Unless you're making a ton of money every month, that's a lot of extra money to either budget or you're looking for ways to cut costs, which the environment that we're living in today with inflation and everything else that's going on, everything's getting more expensive. So trying to cut costs can be really, really difficult. But looking at buying a house can be one way to lock in that fixed payment so you don't have to deal with the headaches of what these landlords are willing to charge these days. And I want to give a special shout out to our commenter of the week, Michelle Anunziata. She mentioned that we had great information. Love that you break down the real numbers. This is the basis of decision to relocate. Does it make money sense? Thank you so much, Michelle. I appreciate that. And that's definitely one of the reasons why I started this channel was to give you the information that you need to make the best decision on your mortgage. And if you are thinking about relocating anywhere else in the country, don't forget here at Lone Depot, we've got you covered in all 50 states. Just drop me an email and we can get you connected with our team to help you with your financing. Now, one of the things that we like to look at when we pre-approve someone to purchase a home is the cost over time. Every lender can point out what the monthly savings or the difference can be, but I like to magnify that for our clients because the decision that you make today does have an impact on your future. So if we were looking at these scenarios right here with our client, the one thing that I would point out to them is how much money are you going to be saving or spending in the next 60 months or five years? Most people that get into a mortgage usually keep their mortgage for about five to seven years. That's kind of the industry average. You will either sell, refinance, or do something to your mortgage within that time frame. So let's look at what does that cost look like for our client over the next 60 months. Now, if you were to take the quarter percent increase, you would end up paying another $4,500 a month over the next 60 months. If you were to wait and take a half a percent increase on your mortgage, you're spending an extra $9,000 over the course of the next five years. And then if you waited, you got the 6% interest rate, it's gonna cost you an extra $18,000 over the next five years. This is where it gets really impactful when you look at finances, because you may look at the initial estimate that I gave you and said, oh, maybe $100 or $200 is not that big of a deal, but if you are having a tough time saving up money and you don't have a rainy day fund or any sort of emergency funds, which if you look at national statistics, most Americans out there do not have any sort of savings. So if we could save you $18,000, that's huge. That's a big game changer that now you can start saving for yourself, for your kids, college fund, whatever it end up being. But that's an extra $18,000 that you might not think about today that we can put back into your pocket. And now the cost of waiting. We also review this again with our clients, what the interest that you're paying over the next 15 years of your loan. Now at the 5% range, you're paying about $232,000 in interest. And for all of you renters out there that don't consider buying or think that buying is an option, imagine how much rent that you've been paying over the last 15 years. You probably could have purchased a home already at this point. But this is why home ownership is so powerful because you can take that savings and look at all the appreciation that we've been seeing over the last decade. It's been literally record numbers almost every single year. Now, a quarter percent increase in rate is going to cost you about another $13,000 in interest that you're paying over the next 15 years. Again, that's almost an extra thousand dollars a year that it's costing you just for the mortgage alone. Half a percent increase you're looking at about $26,000 in interest. And again, our 6% rate, the 1% increase from the original 5% is gonna cost you a little over $50,000 in interest. 
This is why it's so important that when you work with a lender, they review all these numbers with you and get to know what your true financial goal is because anybody can throw you into a mortgage, but you wanna make sure you're making the right decision because if you get the wrong mortgage, that maybe it costs you a little more money that you are unaware of, you can easily make a mistake. And I've seen this happen to clients over and over again. Take this client, for example, what if you bought the house with an interest rate that was higher, you weren't in the right mortgage, and it cost you an extra $50,000 in interest over the next 15 years, if you were to stay in the home, you're literally throwing thousands of dollars away every single year for no reason. And this is why it's always important that when you do get pre-approved, your lender gives you options. Anyone, like I've said in my videos numerous times, can quote you a rate, can quote you the lowest interest rate. But remember, the lowest interest rate is not always the best option. You want to look at strategy. You want to look at what's going to be a perfect fit for your financial goals. And that's one thing we do here at Loan Depot is we make sure that we every client gets a total cost analysis and you can clearly understand what's the best mortgage that's going to fit for you. So that's just a quick example of how mortgages and interest rates affect each other. And if again, you need a specific scenario as to how that interest rate is going to impact your mortgage, whether it's a purchase or a refinance, send me an email. I'd be happy to come up with a scenario for you. And until the next time, I'll see you on the next video.